The story of the flood contains a chain of noteworthy events. First, the waters cover everything. Genesis 7.19 And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. Then, according to Genesis chapter 8, verse 13, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. Once the waters withdrew, it was time for Noah and his family to leave the ark, right? Genesis chapter 8, verses 15 and 16, Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark. So Noah, his family, and the animals left the ark, and life restarted on the ground. After that, says Genesis chapter 9, verse 1, God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And there's one more element here, a dietary law. Genesis chapter 9, verse 3, Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. I have given you all things, even as the green herbs. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. So, first, water everywhere. Second, dry land. Third, life restarts on the dry land. Fourth, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And fifth, dietary law. This is interesting, isn't it? Haven't we seen this chain of events before? Of course we have. Where? In the story of creation. First, water was everywhere. Then, the dry land appeared. And vegetation. Next, God created animals and humans. Subsequently, God said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And finally, God gave humans dietary instructions. Genesis chapter 1 verse 29, and God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. The conclusion is simple. The story of the flood is in fact the story of a new creation. Shalom.